Yeah, yeah, we back again. Happy Sunday, everybody. I hope you're having a good day. Today, we're going to dive into some Ben Shapiro. I heard this guy goes crazy on the people. and he let them know facts, straight facts on facts. Let's go start off with this right here. You hear me? I'll just bet. Again, I ask you, Buddy Romer gave you $4 million to start TYT. What did he expect in return? Should he not have given you money? Was the money not speech? It was just money. After all, it's just like a hooker, I assume. So are you the prostitute? How did this work? Health insurance, health insurance is an earned benefit. It's not given for free to employees, they earn it. Should your employer be able to decide how you spend your money? It is, hold up. It is, earn, hold on, earn, earn, uh, one second. Earned, for, earned from whom? Okay, I, I may think that I earn twice the salary that I get from this radio station. That doesn't mean that I have an earned benefit from the radio station for twice what they're willing to pay me. It's always a consensual so relationship. You pay for your health care. I, well, first of all, I, I do because it was negotiated in the contract that I signed and which in which I voluntarily engaged. And if I don't like that, I can quit tomorrow. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, no one put a gun in your head. You have the opportunity to go elsewhere and make it happen. How about combating actual acts of racism? How about singling out racism and then actually doing something about it as opposed to doing this kind of Marxist newspeak in which we go through everybody's hidden actions? You know, I'm sensing, I'm sensing a real sort of underlying, I don't know, racial bias to this whole segment. Robert, I find you to be racially biased. I find you to be insensitive, bigoted, and misogynist based on everything that you've said. It may be hidden. Maybe I can't detect it, but we all know it's there. So perhaps you should go through this program. At the end of the program, you will feel free. You'll feel better about you yourself, and you'll, you'll feel I more think informed. We could, I think we could all over the topic of uh, institutional racism. Racism is brought up. Sure. You'll always ask, uh, where is the institution? Show me the racist laws so that we can fight them together. Correct. Um, welcome to Alabama. <laughs> uh, this would qualify as a racist institution, the state of Alabama. I, I already know Ben about to let him have it. So now I go back to the question that you say that you answered, which is, show me the law. You've named an institution you don't like, now show me the law. No, it's not an institution I don't like. I've lived here my whole life. But, uh, I mean, you called it racist, so I assume you're not super the, fond of it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it has flaws, um, to say the least. But um, the Constitution of Alabama demands that schools be segregated by race. If it weren't for the federal government, there would only be white people in this room. I will admit to you, okay, so a couple of, a couple of fundamental assumptions, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit I have not read the Constitution of the state of Alabama, so I, don't, so I don't know the provision that you are talking about. I will assume that it says what you say it says for the purposes of this conversation. If, in fact, there's a provision in the state law of, Const of Alabama that says that segregation is mandated by law, of course that's racist, that's Jim Crow, and that would be institutional racism. The point that I'm making is that there are a lot of black people in this room today because the institutional racism that you are decrying was, in fact, wiped out out at the legal level by the federal government in the 1960s. So if you're citing a law from 19, you know, from 1873 or 1865, whenever the Constitution embedded segregation, if you're citing that law to prove institutional racism and that law has not been applied for 50 years, you're going to need to do better. You yeah, understand? People like to bring up the past and something that's not currently happening. Come on, man, you got to stay on point when you're debating. Race place and that all that what happened with the swastika, but you can't wear the Halloween costume you want unless no one finds it offensive. Well, now the selectively offended get to run the rest of the, the country. I mean, th this is what we are creating. We are creating a society of, of panty waist fascists. What we are creating is a, gr a group of people who are oversensitive to everything and then are willing to call the cops as soon as they are offended. It's actually I incredible, and it's a violation of the First Amendment, which you saw with a professor from the Mass Communications Department at Missouri telling reporters right. that they have no right to be there, and at Yale you have students shouting people down. If this is the climate that we're supposed to create, if this is supposed to create openness and tolerance on the campus, I'm missing the openness and tolerance tolerance in let's call the police if i'm mildly offended because my feelings have been hurt I mean, this you hear me we live in a sensitive world right now people are so sensitive it's like anything you do they're gonna call you insensitive i'm personally tired of that i mean i'd rather be told like how it is i don't know about you i don't like nothing sugar-coated don't vaseline nothing look give it to me straight pause you understand what i'm saying hey
Let's get back to this. Telling reporters that they have no right to be there, and at Yale you have students shouting people down. If this is the climate that we're supposed to create, if this is supposed to create openness and tolerance on the campus, I'm missing the openness and tolerance in, let's call the police if I'm mildly offended because my feelings have been hurt. I mean, this is creating a country of crazy people. How can you watch this and not go crazy and think that everyone who's involved in it is crazy in the first place? How can you honestly stand up here and say that you support abortion, you support government intervention, excuse me, you support government intervention to uh, make abortion illegal, which is designed to kill someone, and yet you can stand up here and say you don't want government intervention for guns, which are also designed to kill people. Because guns are not designed to kill children. Guns are designed to kill bad guys if operated by a proper person. There's not an abortion in the world that doesn't end with the death of a baby. Damn, he just be shooting back. I mean, it's like he be having a cocked and loaded pause again, but you get me? Sheesh, you better have your facts when you come over home, boy. The question in Hobby Lobby is whose freedom is being infringed upon? Employees' freedom is not infringed upon when they enter into a consensual relationship with an employer that includes certain types of health care. Not consensual. Of There's course it is. They can quit. Who is I mean, forcing them? Where is the gun? Huh? Where is the gun? Who is forcing them? Where is I said it earlier. No one is being forced. People need to stop being sensitive. I mean, listen, if I don't like something that's going on, I'm out of here with an employer that includes certain types of health care. Not consensual. Of There's course it is. They can quit. Who is I mean, forcing them? Where is the gun? What? Huh? Where is the gun? Who is forcing them? Where is the chain? Who is locking them to the the gun language. No, but, they, but, no, but this is the, no, this is a, the, the reason that I use the gun language is because it is vitally important for people to understand that every government measure at the end of the day has, it, it must be compelled by force. That's what government measures are for. There is a vast difference, a huge difference in terms of personal liberty and freedom between the government compelling behavior and a company saying that we are not going to provide certain types of coverage and if you don't like that, you can quit or buy your own coverage. There's a vast difference. The gun's the whole issue. The question was about abortion, and I just wanted to know why exactly do you think a first trimester fetus has moral value? Okay, so a first trimester fetus has moral value because whether you consider it a potential human life or, an, or a full-on human life, it has more value than just a cluster of cells. If it's a life. Life is a life. No matter how young, premature, or post-mature, listen, it's life. Left to its natural processes, it will grow into a baby. So the real question is, where do you draw the line? So you're going to draw the line at the heartbeat? Because it's very hard to draw the line at the heartbeat. There are people who are adults who are alive because of a pacemaker, and they need some sort of outside force generating their heartbeat. Okay, are you going to do it based on brain function? Okay, well, what about people who are in a coma? Should we just kill them? Right? The problem is, anytime you draw any line other than the inception of the child, you end up drawing a false line that can also be applied to people who are adults. So either human life has intrinsic value or it doesn't. I think we both agree that adult human life has intrinsic value. Can we start from that premise? I believe that sentience um, has, is what gives something moral value, not okay, necessarily. So not All right, here we go with the wordplay. Wordplay that fits the narrative so I can feel good because I'm sensitive. I think we both agree that adult human life has intrinsic value. Can we start from that premise? I believe that sentience um, has, is what give something moral value not okay, so, necessarily not necessarily being a human alone okay because, so or, or, when you're so when you're asleep can i stab you i'm still considered sentient when i'm asleep okay if you are in a coma from which you may awake can i stab you well then uh no i guess not. I mean, like, <laughs> i'm glad you answered that because i have no interest in actually murdering that's, you but that's, so, but that's still potential sentience and it's still a potential like, i agree like, it is potential sentience. sentience you know what okay. else is potential sentience being Ha <laughs> ha You just proved them wrong, you hear me? A potential life. Fetus. Yeah. And let me tell you something about safe spaces. There's only one group of people, one group of people, who want safe spaces that are race-specific. There are only one group of people that want safe spaces so that they never have to hear from anybody of a different ideology or political persuasion. Those people are called fascists. Okay, and you've got a bunch of fascists, damn fascists on this campus who are trying to shut down political debate and trying to cloister themselves in this little cocoon of stupidity so they don't have to debate anyone or think about issues outside their kin so that they can feel comfortable. Guess what? Life isn't about feeling comfortable. Life is about bettering yourself. Get off your ass, you stupid pansies. Overall, if you're talking about the level of government spending, it needs to go down and you believe that it really needs to go up. Okay, so it's disingenuous. It it's, it's not on war, does it? No, but overall, not on the war okay. on drugs, Chase, not on Chase. so many Over, of those wasteful overall, programs. It overall, depends. But let me, overall, let, you let want you the finish. federal budget increased. 
Overall, I would like the federal bu budget decreased. To pretend that this is not true is to lie. Okay, and when you suggest that there is no difference between, you know, we just have different visions of, of what the government should cover, these things cost different things. Okay, the war in Iraq was very expensive. You know what's more expensive? Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. All of these are vastly more expensive than the war in we Iraq. We paid in. They don't care about the people, it's just these weapons. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Um, so, you have given a number of speeches about the difference between opportunity and outcome, and you say that our country has no lack of opportunity, correct? Equal access to rights, I think, right, would be the better right. way to state it, yeah. Oh, okay, so equal, I'm saying, okay. Equal so. access to the exercise of rights. So you're, you're correct that I've said opportunity before, and it's not exact enough, so I'm modifying it now. Okay. Because when I say, because, with a, because not to forecast where this conversation is going to go, but, uh, but I have a feeling where you're going to go, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I'll give you plenty of time, uh, is, is that what you're going to say is that not everybody has equal opportunity, which, of course, is true. Not everybody, some people are rich, some people are poor, some people are smart, some people are stupid, but everyone does have equal access to rights. And that is the truth. But you can only blame yourself, most of the times, your family, because everything starts in that house. No one asks to be born. Hopefully you're born in a place where, let's just say, you're either getting ahead or you're on your way to. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. See, he's nice. No, no, no. Okay. Did and so Ben, I read your article today, and it was I was shocked by the language you used. Uh, you were you were saying that I was shocked. She was shocked. It hurt her emotion because of the word he used. Yep, yep. Same people that vote. Same people. <laughs> And so, Ben, I read your article today, and it was, I was shocked by the language you used. Uh, you, were you were saying that it's time for the call, right call the police to right now. fight. <laughs> yeah. No, but you read his evidence, column. Evidence, evidence, evidence. All this is is screaming and feelings. How about, like, a shred of evidence, even for the incidents that actually evidence. happened in Missouri reports. that drove this... Pre really? 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 What, where was the police report Ms exactly when it came to, for example, the first N-word incident that led all of this? There was no police report on any of that. In the second incident, at the N-word at the University of Missouri, the administration investigated and the kids under investigation but, in the third incident wait, with the cop kid, cars, listen, it, listen, with, with, I'm someone that believes that certainly the child unborn child has rights I believe that the mother has rights I simply have to be a person and some believe that those mother's rights uh, deemed to uh, usurp those rights but certainly in, it's not in, to in disrespect what, in what world, thought, ben, not in what world would any of my rights allow me to kill another human being there's only one thing mm. Mm. that was deep in what world would your rights allow you to kill another human being? That was deep. That was a deep punchline. And in some believe that those mother's rights uh, deem to uh, usurp those rights. But certainly in, it's not in, to in disrespect. What, in what world, it's in, not in what to world would any of my rights allow me to kill another human being? There's only one thing that could make me say or do anything pro-Trump, and that is all of the precious snowflakes. You find it so offensive that people write chalk messages on the ground. They have to whine and cry about it on a national level. So, in the name of free speech. <laughs> you can't run ads within a certain period of time. You have public financing versus private financing. Those are rules around an election. That is a completely different issue than the government saying randomly you can and you can't invest in businesses. Why? So you're conflating those two issues that have nothing to do with one another. Why? So let, let, let's just uh, work. Wait, we're, what we're, does we're, why mean? Because it's those a, are because two, hey, it's, why, hey, you know, you believe in education, so why don't you believe in health care? Because, because it's a free country and I get to spend my money wherever I damn well please. Um, I personally don't think that, like, I could have an abortion just because morally I feel like for myself it wouldn't be the right choice um but how do you defend your opinion as a white well-off religious man um how do you defend your ha like telling a woman what she can do with because her body evil things are so evil to... even if i'm a white well-off religious man see the thing is no one is telling anybody what to do it's just what's right and what's wrong we need to stop acting like you know there's no more morals like morals just left like they 86 it you know what i'm saying i don't get that 
And good things are still good, even if I'm a white girl off religious man. Yeah, absolute nonsense, Peter. You didn't my, write that my column position in on Israel was made clear Peter, in 2013. Peter, column and to call me ever. equivalent with people who are murdering Jews is insanity. It's beyond insulting. And if there's anybody who's emboldening Hamas to kill more children, it is you. Because it is, it is your policies which have emboldened Hamas. They know that people like you are going to get on American television oh. and talk about how the Palestinians are meek victims. And whenever they fire rockets, it can be justified by Israeli policy. Hamas All celebrates right, every All moment right, you're gentlemen. on television, that's it. Peter. We Occupy Wall Street movement thinks this is a group of people who graduated with with the degrees in lesbian dance theory, and then were surprised when they didn't get a six-figure paycheck out of college. I mean, this is, uh, unfortunately, they were getting a paycheck consummate with their education level. The, the problem is that if, you have to be productive in a capitalist society in order to earn anything. And, and this is, a, unfortunately, a lazy generation, a generation that, that expects things. And ignorant and communist is no way to go through life. The Word. I don't expect anything. The only thing I expect of myself is to get up in the morning and do what I got to do every day. Until I achieve a goal, achieve one goal, I go to the next. It don't stop there, man. Ain't nothing stopping me. Not you, not anybody. And you should feel the same way, too. The middle class has more money, disposable income. They spend it. Why? Because they're not living in the lap of luxury. They're not saving it for their yacht. So they need to buy food for their family. They need education for their family. Listen, man, we all have 24 hours in a day. There's no excuse see this right here all i see is a poor excuse in order to make people join a pity patty party listen man i'm not willing to that i don't want to feel sorry for myself i need a way out i need a solution so they spend it and it goes back into the economy if you just give it in supply side economics to the rich and hope that it trickles down on us eventually decades later what they wind up doing it with it is something that is logical they save it the problem with Keynesian economics is that it doesn't even work in theory because again once you go to the logical extreme which is remove all of the money from the rich people who are saving all their money and give it to all the poor people to buy hamburgers that doesn't help the economy or spur the economy what spurs the economy is the creation of new products and services and that is only only going to be done by people who have exp expendable capital to actually invest in the new products and services that we all enjoy. This is what you see, when people don't understand money, they can manipulate your thoughts, your feelings, how you think, how you see, vision, everything, what you smell or what you taste. I'm telling you, it's not a game out here. They're playing with you, but it's really chess are saving all their money and give it to all the poor people to buy hamburgers, that doesn't help the economy or spur the economy. What spurs the economy is the creation of new products and services, and that is only going to be done by people who have exp expendable capital to actually invest in the new products and services that we all enjoy. This is what creates economic growth. You had an investor, right? When you started TYT, you were given $4 million by Buddy Romer to start TYT. That's great. That's the way business should work, right? But that money had, it didn't come from a bunch of poor people buying hamburgers. It came from a very, very wealthy guy who gave you money to create a business a lot of people want to patronize if you want better products and better services you need more investment in the products and services the basic name trickle down economics is not something that any conservative even proposed it's a leftist revision of what economics actually is because Bruh. yeah he's giving them straight facts you're not giving me the money. It was my money in the first place, created through voluntary transactions that I had with others. I've not stolen money from either from anyone, neither have you. And the idea that money has to be forcibly taken from you and handed to somebody at the bottom end of the economic spectrum to somehow jog the economy, that may jog McDonald's, but is not going to jog all of the creation of the products and services that make all of our lives much better today than they were 30 years ago in terms of the stuff we have access to. If we can just trust the government, then why aren't we just trusting the government to do the right thing now? I don't understand why a piece of legislation makes them better at what they do. I mean, the government is not very good at what they're doing now. Why, did, why does new wording make them not suck? Because part of the reason... <laughs> part of the reason you have a law or initiative as a deterrent, that the government won't even be involved, that the bad guys won't be going to gun shows to buy guns, so they have to circumvent it. Well, but that's, that's exactly the point. If bad guys are not going to gun shows to... to, to with regard to Ebola, and for a second, this is a mild digression. With regard to Ebola, the federal government just made the case that they don't want a federal travel ban, right? Because they said if there's a federal travel ban, people will just find a way to circumvent the federal travel ban. Okay, do you see the analogy here? This, this myth that spending is inherently better for an economy than saving, that's only true if you're talking about somebody's actually taking the cash and just shoving it into their mattress. Banks are in the business of lending. When they take the money in, they don't just stick it in Al Gore's fake lockbox. They actually lend the money back out to people to actually create new businesses and new products. You
You know why? There's a reason why they call it currency. It's a current. In order for money to grow, it has to flow. You get it? Listen, man. If you don't know, go, go get a course or two on macroeconomics. You know what I'm saying? Thank me later. Mattress. Banks are in the business of lending. When they take the money in, they don't just stick it in Al Gore's fake lockbox. They actually lend the money back out to people to actually create new businesses and new products. You had an investor, right? When you started TYT, you were given $4 million by Buddy Romer to start TYT. That's great. That's the mm. way business should work, right? Mm. Blew up the whole spot, $4 milli just to start something. You see this? But that money had, it didn't come from a bunch of poor people buying hamburgers. It came from a very, very wealthy guy who gave you money to create a business a lot of people want to patronize. If you want better products and better services, you need more investment in the products and services. The basic name, Trickle Down Economics. Hmm. The basic name trickle-down economics is not something that any conservative even proposed. It's a leftist revision of what economics actually is, because you're not giving me the money. It was my money in the first place, created through voluntary transactions that I had with others. I've not stolen money from either from anyone, neither have you. And the idea that money has to be forcibly taken from you and handed to somebody at the bottom end of the economic spectrum to somehow jog the economy, that may jog McDonald's, but it's not going to jog all of the creation of the products and services that make all of our lives much better today than they were 30 years ago in terms of the stuff we have access to do you think that women who voted for hillary man this guy is the truth i'm telling you so you already know on that note make sure you follow up if you like what you saw